Hi everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from the beginner series. In this one, we will work on this phone holder without making things too complicated. Let's get into it by adding a cube. A cube is the best option among those primitive objects, so let's add this one in. Now to adjust this cube, we need to make it editable so that we can go into polygon edge or points mode. So I will select the cube, I will tap C on the keyboard, then I will go into edge mode. I want to select that edge and move it down, but as you can see, the axis of the selected edge is not relative to the world, which will make things a bit harder to adjust. So, firstly, let's fix that. I'm going to right click on one of those axes and set the orientation to world. Now it is aligned with the world, which will make things a bit easier to adjust. Okay, now I want to work on that area, so I will move that edge down. And I can see that that surface is a bit angled, so I will move that edge along the Z. Now let's move up to that edge. I want to move it along the Z as well. I'm trying to build up that area. Okay, that seems good to me. Next up, I will go into polygon mode. Because I want to delete those polygons. I will hold my shift, select them. I don't think we need that volume, so I will just delete them. It's going to make things a bit easier to work with. Okay, next up we need thickness, obviously. So to do that, I'm going to select everything. By the way, let me turn off that work plane so that you can see it a bit better. I will select this bag. I will right click and select the extrude tool. What I want to do is extrude those polygons inwards. So let's apply the tool. Once I have done that, I will go to the options of the extrude tool and enable create caps option. Perfect. Now I will select everything. I will hit Ctrl A and scale those polygons along the X. To do that, I will tap T or you can click on this icon to, to grab the scale tool and scale these along the, along the X axis. While those polygons are selected, I want to flip them because right now the normals are facing the wrong way. I will right click, go all the way down and click on reverse normals. Now I want to adjust the rough shape. It seems like we need more angle on this polygon. So I will go into edge mode again. I will select the move tool and select the edge. I'm not going to adjust the shape or adjust the angle of that polygon by moving that edge around. If I do that, I'm going to change the thickness of the top section. It's not going to be a uniform, you know, thickness. So what I need to do is select that edge and move it instead of the top edge, which is going to maintain the thickness of the top and of the bottom section. Let's do something like that. Now I want to select that edge and move it as well so that we have an even, you know, thickness around here. Actually, I will move it a bit further so that I can show you how we can adjust that edge. Because if you want to move that edge with the move tool, let me show you that in the right view. So if you want to adjust that edge with the move tool, you can see that it is going to be a bit random, which is going to change the thickness of the top section. So what we need to do is lock that edge to the angle of the surface. So doing this is going to be extremely easy. I will right click and select the slide tool and slide that up. Let's do that in the right view because I want to align that edge with that one. I will select this back. And it seems like it is looking quite well. By the way, as you can see, I am not using any image planes. I am using a single reference image. I believe trying to model things with a single image or with a single reference point is a great way to improve your 3D modeling skills. It kind of forces you to think in 3D dimensional, if you know what I mean. I know it makes things a bit harder to follow and adjust, but I can guarantee that it is going to help you a lot. All right, we have completed the first step. In this first step, the aim is to model the shape as simple as possible. You basically forget about those bevels in the very first step. In the second step, we will try to get those bevels. So let's go into edge mode. I am going to 
start with those ones because these are going to be quite easy. I will right click, select the bevel tool, and bevel these out with zero subdivision. To be exact, I'm going to set the offset to 14. By the way, if you haven't watched the first tutorials in the series, make sure to watch them before getting into this one because the things that I talk about may sound alien to you and confuse you. We can find more information about those bevels in the previous tutorials. Okay, now I will move down to that edge. By the way, the reason why I am beveling these edges lastly is because these are a bit more complicated. Let me show you. I will right click, select the bevel tool again and bevel these out and you can see that we have those unwanted components on the beveled part because we have those extra edges along the way so in order to have a clean bevel i am going to get rid of those edges i will hold on shift then right click and click on dissolve this is going to be a temporary adjustment. I will add in those edges back. But firstly, to have clean bevels, I need to have relatively less complex surfaces, if that makes sense. So I will select these back, right click and bevel these out. I will type in 14. Let me hit Ctrl Z and apply it one more time. 14, apply. I'm going to go into edge mode and select that edge because I want more space between that edge and that edge so I will select that polygon oh, sorry I will select that edge because if I remove that polygon it is going to change the thickness of the top section so I should select the edge and move it along the Z now I will select the top edge this time around I will use the slide tool okay that looks way better Next up, I will try to correct the mesh. This is going to be the third step. First step is the round shape. Second step is the bevels or details. And third step is going to be about adjusting or correcting the mesh. Right now, as you can see, we have all these empty points. And when it comes to subdivision service workflow, we need quad polygons. So to correct the mesh, I will right click, select the line cut tool and connect those empty points. I will connect that one to that one, which is going to give us that quad. I will go back to the points mode. By the way, you can be in edge or polygon mode. It doesn't matter. Line cut tool will always work. I am using the points mode so that you can see it a bit better. Line cut tool, I will connect that point to that one. Now we have all quads on the surface. I will basically repeat that process on the other surfaces. I will go into points mode, line cut tool. I will connect that point to that one. Then let me enable a little single line so that the cut stops when I click on a point. Next up, I will connect that one to that one, that one to that one, and that one to that one. We correct it those ones now let's move on to those ones those surfaces on the sides i will right click select the line cut tool you may be tempted to connect that point to that one and that one to that one it is not wrong as these are all quads but whenever it comes to south division service workflow try to keep things as straight as possible try to stay away from diagonal edges Subdivision surface workflow like straight, square, and even components. As the name suggests, subdivision surface workflow is all about dividing things. So I'm going to, this time around, use the polygon pen tool, hold on control, and get rid of those edges. Instead of those diagonal ones, I will select the line cut tool and add in straight edges proportional to the mesh, like these ones. Then by the way, let me do it one more time. I'm going to add this one in, then connect it across. I will now add in those ones. As you can see, the flow is more straight and subdivision surface deformer will like it a lot. 
Next up, I will do the same thing basically. Let's go to the other side and add in those points. Perfect. Let's go into polygon mode. I will orbit around the mesh just to make sure that we have no handguns. Next up, I will continue adjusting or correcting the mesh. What I want to do is add in more polygons so that we have even and square polygons. As you can see, these are not about the same in size, those polygons. I will right click, select the loop cut tool, hold down shift to add the cuts to the center of the mesh. Then I will increase up the cuts until I have square polygons. I will set this to 5. Also, by setting this to 5, I have this edge loop, which is exactly at the center of the world. It is going to allow us to mirror this object. Now I will grab back the loop tool, loop cut tool, hold down shift, add this one in and increase that up. Looks nice, by the way. When it comes to bevels, I talked about the topic in the previous tutorials. When it comes to bevels, we need to support them with supporting edges like this one and this one. These are next to where the bevel begins and ends. So what you need to do is basically keep those points or edges about the same apart, especially where the bevel is happening. We can find more information about that, I believe in the previous one. Let me go down to that section, add that loop in and increase that up. I am keeping an eye on the surface, but I am also keeping an eye on that area because as I mentioned, I need to keep those points about the same apart. So let me increase that up to seven. Okay. I will back out. These are not even, but it's not too big of a deal. But if you are using Cinema 4D, you can use the vehicle spacing tool. I will select the first edge, then hit Ctrl and Shift and select the last one. This is going to select the edges in between. Right click and apply equal spacing tool. Now we have a really nice mesh. Everything is quad and even. So we can drop this one into subdivision surface. I will select the cube or let's call this holder. I will double click on it. Let's call this holder. Hold down Alt and click on the subdivision surface icon. As expected, this is a very soft looking object. So to tighten things up, I will go into edge mode and select the edges that I want to sharpen. There are multiple ways to do that. The first one is obviously you can just double click, hold down shift and select the edges that you want to sharpen. This is a bit tidy and long process, but it is absolutely okay. But if you want a faster way to do that, tap V, go to select and select the font break selection tool. This is going to select the edges based on their angles. 20 might be too low though, so I will set this to something like 40 or 50. I will orbit around and it seems okay. I will click on select all. Now I will go back to the move tool to exit the funk break selection tool and I will orbit around just to make sure that I have selected the right edges. I see that I don't need those edges so I will hold on shift select those ones because that part is supposed to be soft and round. I will hold on shift deselect these edges and we are good to go. I want to save those selections because I want to show you a way that gives you full control over how sharp or tight an object looks. So let me move this off, go to the selection and then click on store selection. This is going to create a selection tag right next to the object. I'm going to select it and call this bevel. Now if I deselect, I can always go to that selection, double click on it and select these back. But the reason why I added in that tag is because I want to have full control over the bevels. Right now, we can straight up 
right click, select the bevel tool, go into solid mode and bevel these out to tighten up those edges. But once I have done with that tool, there is no going back to adjust those points. I mean, you can select them and slide them around, but it is going to be a very tidy process. So to have full control over those bevels, I am going to use a deformer and that deformer is called Bevel Deformer. I will select the object, Alt and Shift, go to the deformers and select the bevel tool. This is going to parent the bevel tool to the holder or selected object. I will select the bevel deformer, go to the option and turn off use angle. And this is obviously will bevel everything. But what we want is bevel out the edges that we previously selected or stored. So to do that, I will select the bevel deformer, select the tag, selection tag, and drop this one into the selection. Now it is only going to bevel out those selected edges. I will again go into solid mode. I don't want bevels. I just want to add in those cuts on each side of the mesh. I will adjust offset. Then to get rid of those triangles, I will go to the topology and set this option to uniform. Let's enable cell division surface. I will change my display to the default one. And here we go. As I said, now we have full control over the bevels. Like I can select the bevel tool, go to the option and set the offset amount. If I set this to one, I will have this look, a very sharp looking object. But if I set this to two or three, I have a softer look. And if you look at those beveled parts, they are looking quite nice and accurate. Lastly, let me change the projection to photographic view. There's nothing special in it. I just like to look at things from different perspective. Okay, the object is looking perfect. I mean, it is not the exact shape that we see in the image, but you got the point. You can spend more time getting this perfect, but this is going to be it from me. If you have any questions, just let me know anytime you can join the Discord group as we have a separated and dedicated section to just beginners. If you have any questions, just let me know and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.